This week, we'll be going over all of the base game achievements in Alan Wake. This is one of those big horror games that I think at this point everybody has at least heard of, and it recently got a sequel. It has 67 achievements to complete, and it takes about an average of 36 hours. We'll only actually be going over 50 of those for this video because that is all that's included in the base game. I will, however, be putting a playlist linked down in the description and at the end of the video for the rest of the Alan Wake guides that we end up doing. That'll include DLC, collectibles, all that good stuff. And don't forget, we do post written versions of our guides over on our website, which you can find linked below. So if that's more your thing, go check those out. And now let's get to hunting. Before we begin, we should go over a couple of things to help you plan out your 100%. Of course, I'd recommend just going through the base game achievements first, which is why we're only covering those in this video. That means we'll be doing videos on the DLC achievements that were added in the 2 DLC, plus a full collectible video for all of the base game collectibles. We'll need to do one playthrough on normal or easy for the first one. This will allow us to get almost all of the collectibles and most of the random miscellaneous achievements. I say almost all of the collectibles because there are going to be 15 that you can only get during our second playthrough, the Nightmare playthrough. This will be a much harder run, which is only unlocked after beating the game once, which is why that's the second playthrough. We'll also have to do a full playthrough on that difficulty to get another achievement for completing the game specifically on that difficulty. Now, we'll go ahead and start going over all of the story-related, unmissable achievements to get those out of the way. You don't really have to think about them, you'll just get them automatically while playing through your first playthrough. We have Follow the Light for taking a night course of light education. You'll get this during episode 1. Then Nordic Walking for taking a walk through the logging area and meeting one of the quirky locals. And unfortunately, it's not going to be an e-girl in the logging area, just a little old taken. And you'll get this during episode 1. Bright Falls Finest for calling for help. This will be at the end of episode 1. Next will be Under a Thin Layer of Skin for Defying the Park Ranger. This will be in Episode 2. Then we have Park Ranger for Enjoying the Sounds and Sights of Elderwood National Park. You'll get this at the end of Episode 2. Wheels Within Wheels is for Meeting the Kidnapper. You're going to get that one at the end of Episode 3. And the next we can get Perchance to Dream for Taking a Moment to Reflect on Past Events. You'll get that one at the end of Episode 4. Then, we have Gatekeeper for cutting the power to the Transformer Yard. You're gonna get that one at Episode 5. The Lady of the Light will be for discovering the secrets that she guards. You'll get that one at the end of Episode 5. And the next will be Tornado Wrangler for defeating the tornado. You're gonna get that one during Episode 6. There are going to be a few achievements for difficulty at the end, but we'll go over those when we do our Nightmare Run, because doing that is going to unlock all of the difficulty achievements below it as well. Now, shifting over into the missable achievements, we do have a lot of collectibles. Like, 300 plus collectibles. So we're not going to go over those in this video, but I will be putting out a big guide showing every single collectible in the game. Those will be Finders Keepers for discovering 5 hidden chests, Every Nook and Cranny for discovering all of the hidden chests, Damn Good Cup of Coffee for discovering 25 coffee thermoses, Hypercaffeinated for discovering all of the coffee thermoses. Paging Mr. Wake for finding 25 manuscript pages. Picking up after yourself for finding all of the manuscript pages in normal mode. Collector's Edition for finding all of the manuscript pages in the game, including Nightmare Mode ones. Carney for knocking over five can pyramids. KBF FM for listening to all of the radio shows. Couch Potato for watching every single TV show and Bright Falls Aficionado for reading all of the signs. Yes, there are a lot of these, and a very large portion of your first playthrough will be spent just trying to track down which ones you've gotten, and kind of keep those in order and keep that up. So, I did make a Google Sheet to kind of help you with that, that you can get over on the written version of the guide from over on our website. Link is going to be down in the description. Just make sure that you make a copy of it, instead of requesting to edit. Now as for the rest, we can start going through these sort of around the time that you might get them, but also broken into kind of categories. 
So not necessarily a collectible, but another one to keep in mind as you play through the game is drink them up both for putting the lime and the coconut twice. During episode 1, you're going to be in the little diner and a couple of crazy old rock stars are going to ask you to turn on the jukebox. You're going to want to do that. Then fast forward over to episode 5, and you'll be walking past that same diner, and you'll need to go in there and turn the jukebox on again. This has to be done in the same playthrough to count for this achievement. Float like a butterfly is for performing a cinematic dodge. This is essentially just for dodging out of the way from an attack at the perfect time where the game puts you into a slow-mo scene and shows it off. They are very forgiving about the time window that you have to do this, so it shouldn't really be too hard to do. Going along with that, there's also missed by a mile for doing this 20 times. So, just make sure that you keep on dodging attacks as they come up to get that as well. Let there be light, we'll be forgetting a generator running, there's going to be plenty of these in the game for you to get running during your playthrough, so it might as well be unmissable. Then there's It Flies It Burns for burning 1000 birds. This you can grind out pretty easily in episode 2 near the end when you return to the house where Barry is. You'll have to go out to the backyard and have some flare gun cartridges and a large amount of birds that are going to attack you. Just kill all of those, and then once they're all dead, you can reload your last checkpoint and do it all over again. Keep grinding that out until you get the achievement. Now speaking of killing things, there's a good chunk of the achievements that are related just directly to the different ways that you can defeat the Taken. So we're going to go ahead and start going through some of those. It is worth noting that your progress on these carries over from your first playthrough into your second playthrough, so don't worry too much about getting them all during that first playthrough. I don't even know if it would be possible, but you could probably make it work. Sound and Fury is for killing four Taken in a single flashbang. Once you start getting flashbangs, you're going to want to try to group up a few into a little clump, and then use one grenade to get them all. There will be plenty of places for you to get this, you might even get it accidentally. And then still kind of related to killing things with those utility pieces, back, back I say, will be for saving yourself with a flare. Basically, as a few enemies are coming up, you're going to want to whip out a flare as they're attacking, and then you'll get a nice slow-mo scene that kind of spins around you while you're saving yourself. Come one, come all is for killing four taken with a single shot from the flare gun. This is kind of like the flashbang one. You're just going to want to let a few taken get around in a group, and then shoot a flare off into them. Next we can go over two for the price of one for killing two Taken with a single shotgun blast. You're going to want to try to have a little bit of distance when taking shots and have two Taken grouped up. That way your spread will hit both at the same time and you can try to get them both killed with the same shot. This may take you a few tries to actually get down. I think I just accidentally did it at some point, so that could also happen for you. There here is for destroying 20 poltergeists. Eventually you're going to start having inanimate objects attack you and you can fight them with the light. You'll end up killing 20 pretty naturally, so honestly I wouldn't even worry about this one. Speaking of inanimate objects attacking you, you can get heavy metal for surviving the bulldozer attack. This will be during episode 3 where you'll have to fight the bulldozer after dropping down into this large area. A little tip for beating it is just to sit in one of these kind of corner spots because it's very hard for it to actually hit you when it's just running into walls. Then just keep using the light to slowly kill it until you finally do. And you do have to actually kill it to get this achievement. The description's a little misleading. For another large inanimate object we have Iron Horse for encountering a steam engine. This will be near the end of episode 3 when you have to get into a locked door. Just make sure that you stay outside and fight it with the light until it's dead because just like the last one, you do have to actually kill it to get the achievement. And similarly to the last one, just use buildings or other solid objects to kind of keep it from being able to hit you. It's not just a typewriter brand is for defeating 50 taken with a shotgun. This is going to take a while to get through but just keep grinding it until you do. Similarly we have the 6 gun scribe for defeating 100 taken with the revolver. It'll also take a while to get through this one, but you should eventually get there. There's also Thunder and Lightning for defeating 50 Taken with flashbang grenades. You'll want to try to use them in groups to make this a little more efficient, so group them up, toss a grenade, profit. Next, we'll go over Collateral Carnage for defeating 20 Taken with indirect means. This means using explosives, electricity, etc. 
as long as you aren't the one actually shooting them, but you're just kind of pushing them into different things, then it should count. Right of way is for driving over 15 taken. There will be plenty of situations with you having to drive a long distance, so just make sure that you use the lights on taken and then run them over to kind of start racking that up and get this up to 15. Then what light through yonder window is for defeating 50 taken with the flare gun. You'll just need to allow them to group up and then shoot off a flare to kill a few with one shot. Keep doing that whenever you can and you'll eventually rack these up. The last of these killing achievements will be Taken Season for defeating 50 Taken with the hunting rifle. You'll have access to the hunting rifle less than other guns, so this may take you a little bit to do, but just try to use it whenever you can. Moving on from those, we can go over some random miscellaneous achievements. Medical opinions will be for listening to Hartman's recordings. During episode 4, you'll be in the lodge for kind of crazy artists. Once you get the key to access the staff area, you can go into a small room with a tape recorder and a bunch of paintings. Start listening to the tapes on the recorder, and once you listen to all three, then you'll get the achievement. Boob tube will be for seeing what is on TV during episode 4. Before you exit the lodge, you can turn on the TV there and see the video playing for this achievement. Energized will be for using 100 batteries. I didn't use nearly this many on my first playthrough, but while going through my nightmare run, I finished it up. Just remember, they still count between playthroughs, so you don't have to actually just use 100 in one playthrough. Then, Child of the Elder God is for having a rock and roll moment without dropping to a low health state. This isn't too hard to do even on nightmare mode, so as long as you're somewhat careful, this should be a pretty easy thing to do. Just make it through this sort of boss battle thing on stage and you'll be fine. An idyllic small town is for making it through nightlife in Bright Falls in one go, without dying or restarting, even once. That means starting at episode 5 in the first chapter, Nightlife in Bright Falls, you need to make sure that you do not die and do not restart a checkpoint. This really isn't that hard on the easier difficulties, but the only places that you might run into issues are during the church defense, which really shouldn't be that hard because you've got Sarah helping you out. Just make sure that you have some grenades to use and some ammo. And then at the helicopter defense, again, just make sure that you have grenades and flares ready. There's plenty there for you to pick up. And then make sure that you're turning on both of the floodlights and just keep alternating between them to keep them both up. Then, just shoot the Taken whenever you can and use grenades when needed. Other than that, it shouldn't really be too bad, especially if you're on an easier difficulty. For Gunless Wonder, you're going to need to make it to Cauldron Lake without firing a single shot. This will be in the first part of Episode 6. You're going to be driving your way to Cauldron Lake, and you'll have to either flare, flashbang, or use the car all the way there. This really isn't that bad either, because you have a car to use most of the way through this. Then, Meet the Deadline is going to be for making it from the Coal Mine Museum to Cauldron Lake in 30 minutes. This one might be one that you want to just kind of ignore your first playthrough, and then reload the chapter to do it after the fact so that you can just solely focus on it. This is going to be in Episode 3, Part 2, Mirror Peak, and you'll want to go as fast as you can to the end. And then eventually, around this part, you're going to have the achievement pop up. And the timer doesn't actually start until you drop down after being on the phone with the kidnapper. And now, we can get to our second playthrough, The Nightmare Run. Of course, we won't be able to start this until after we've already beaten the game once. Now when it comes to this, there are going to be a few general guidelines to go by to get through it. It's not really that hard, but it can have some difficult parts, especially if you're not prepared enough. You will take more damage from hits, you will do less damage, and there's going to be less supplies around the map. That means you need to try to conserve ammo as much as possible, and if you're going to use it, you better be hitting your shots. Generally, you'll be better off conserving stamina when walking, and then just as enemies start coming, then sprint, dodge, and run towards the light. That generally got me through a lot of the little chase sequences and stuff between light sources. Sometimes you might have to kind of turn around and flash your light on them to get them to stop, or you might have to throw a flare and kind of run with it for a second, but in general, doing that is a pretty good way to go. Because you do not want to take fights that you don't have to. You also don't want to be going out of your way to pick things up that you don't have to, other than, of course, the 15 Nightmare Mode manuscripts that will need to finish up the collectibles. 
And like I mentioned before, I'll have a full video going over all of the collectible locations in depth, so be sure to check that out while doing these runs. Then, once you beat the game on Nightmare Mode, you'll get all of the difficulty-related achievements that you didn't do already. That'll be Departure for beating the game on Normal Mode, Hard-Boiled Rider for beating the game on Hard Difficulty, and of course, Alan Wake Up for completing the game on Nightmare Mode. And with that, we have 100% of the achievements in Alan Wake's base game. If you find our guides helpful, be sure to like the video, subscribe, and, of course, check out our playlist linked here for the rest of our Alan Wake guides.